Welcome back to CBS Mornings. Our next guest, we are very happy to tell you, is media mogul. I just like saying media mogul Tyler Perry in the same damn sentence. He's a creator of dozens of movies and shows and runs one of the country's largest production studios. Now, his life is the subject of a new documentary. It's called Maxine's Baby, The Tyler Perry Story. You could say this is a family project named for Perry's mother. Her name was Maxine and co-directed by the mother of his son. That's Galila Bekele. Focus on his early life and the hardships he faced before success. So in this clip, Tyler Perry shares a candid moment during the grand opening of Tyler Perry Studios in Atlanta. Did he ever think he'll have all of this right now? Are you really trying that with me right now? Are you I, really trying that with me right now? It ain't gonna happen, buddy. I just, I just need... It ain't gonna happen. You better, you better call Gail King or Oprah Winfrey or somebody. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't gonna happen. I'm not going there. All right. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try it on weekend. Just get through this moment. I have to try not to float above it. See, that's, that's my thing, though. My problem with a lot of things in life is I can float above it. And um, that's just from childhood. That's from abuse, where it's pain. You just try to get through it. But I found out that I have that with everything even joy and happiness I'm just I, if it gets my senses get too heightened I just want to be above it so tonight and every day and every moment just like calm down calm down calm down you're okay calm down you're safe it's just emotion it's just feeling it's just it's good you're all right it's love it's joy so calm down you're all right it's love and joy here here the film will be on prime where Tyler Perry has a very exciting four picture deal and He's here in the studio joining us now, first on CBS Mornings. We're so glad you're here, Tyler. I think that scene is very interesting because it's like you go, nope, I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. But people close to you say you would not be who you are if you had not lived through the pain. Do you think this is true oh, about 1, yourself? Oh, yeah, 1,000%. And that's why I tell people who are... So, like, it's really, really hard for me to watch the doc. I, I had no creative control here, so I watched it when it was all done. I said, okay, I, I'm okay with this, so I can't go back and watch it. But Why is it well, hard for you to watch Well, just it reliving my life. It's not a story that I'm telling. I'm not Medea is hiding behind some costume. It's my life, right? Yes. But, yes. But, but I said that to say anybody who's going through, I tell them, once you watch this, I hope that it inspires you. That's the only reason to have this cameras follow me for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And if, if that happens, then it was all worth it for me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. That that ability to float outside or float above, I think a lot of people will relate to that. And you call it your problem, but it, it's also the power that got you out of that tough situation. Is it both the problem, but also the superpower? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a problem as much as it was the thing that helped me cope through all of it. And, and I, I know Dr. Robin was here earlier. I'm sure yes. she'd have something to to actually uh, I explain that, that f phenomenon, but being able to come out of myself whenever there's some sort of heightened sense was something that I really had to work through to mm. understand what it was and to be able to use it for, you know, my show or whatever else yeah. I'm doing. And yeah. speaking of working through, in 2009, your mother passed. Yeah. And you said that you had to work your way out of sadness, everything was dull. How did you? Do that? How did you work your way out of that? Slowly, feeling? With, with slowly, with time. Everything I did was about her. All the work was about her. I was never after money. It was always about making enough money to take care of her, to buy her medicine, to make sure that we were never in poverty again. And I, no matter how much I had, it was never enough. So mm -hmm. I had to slowly work my way out of. Of so she was your motivation of, before. 1,000%. Yeah. So when she died, all of that was gone. It was like a car that ran on gasoline all of a sudden saying, now you need diesel to, to run on. What's How your you motivation switch? now? Wow. I, I lost it for a very, very long time. But now my motivation has become watching all of the people who are coming into the studios, uh, young, black, every everybody represented who has never gotten a chance in this business. That gives me the inspiration to keep going. Tyler Perry Studios is an amazing place. Yeah. I mean... I know you don't often give tours there, but you should give tours there because people should see what you have accomplished. But I want to go back to the thing, because I knew your mom, and I know what your mom meant to you, but your dad caused you so much pain, Tyler. And now as you sit here, a father yourself. I mean, you're raised by a dad who said, you ain't boop, you ain't ever going to be boop, you're worthless, you're this. You didn't take... You didn't take those messages in from him, did you? I heard them all, but there was also that still small voice inside of me saying, that's wrong. Yes. That's not, you're smarter than that. You know, and, and that I believe to be the voice that carried me through all of it. And what all the things that he didn't give me, he did give me an incredible work ethic because I watched this man work very, very hard. But also I learned in reverse of the things that he did. Everything what do you mean? He, everything he did 
in order for me to raise my child. Because one day I was very, very, I'm like, how can I be a father? Nobody taught me how to be this stuff. What do I need to do? And I heard a voice clear as day just say, do the opposite of what he did. Mm. So where there was hatred and anger, I just showed emotional love and support and, and encouragement in the right way for my son. You so tell I your son you love him all of the time. All of the time, Because you want yeah. him to know what. Well, I I mean, want at one point that. in the doc, he says, you're my hero. I yeah. can't imagine. But yeah. that felt like to you as yeah. a father to hear that. Yeah, for yeah, for, for I think it was five years old at the time for, for him to say that to me. I was like, wow, especially coming from what I've come from, and there was such an opposite. So I tell him I love him all the time because I want him to know what that feels like and sounds like from your father. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really wonderful. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. I mean, so you you did not have creative control over this documentary. No. Uh, it was in the hands of the mother of your son. Yeah. She's the director of it. Was it, did you learn things about yourself seeing your life through the eyes of someone who knows you That's but who question. is not you? And was that hard not to have creative control since you write, you direct, you produce? Was yeah, but it, control. And you, control. Yeah, control. Yes. But here, here's yeah. the thing if, if, if I saw it and didn't like it, it wouldn't have seen the light of day. I couldn't change anything in it, but I certainly could bury that joker. So, but, but, <laughs> but, 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 but no, it wasn't, it wasn't difficult because she, she's a brilliant filmmaker and yes. uh, Armani Ortiz, who are the co director, they're both brilliant. They, they know how to paint a story. Story. And I'm, 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 I marvel at their talent. They're far more talented than I, than I am. So to see them put it all together, I was really, really... You know what else I thought was really interesting is that you've been criticized, particularly in the black community. Mm. And you did not shy away from that. The fact that they... They didn't shy okay. away from it. Okay. okay, they didn't shy, but <laughs> yeah. you allowed it to be... Because, yeah. Like you said, yeah. if you didn't like it, you wouldn't yeah. have included it. It featured some of those critics. Yes, yeah. you featured some of the critics. Why was that an important part of the story for them to tell about you? Because we and all does have... that hurt you still? No, we all have critics. We all have people who don't understand. And when I get into those hoity-toity Negroes who don't understand, <laughs> looking down their nose at everything and how dare, you know, it, 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 I marvel at them at how intelligent they are, but how they can miss the most simple things of what this truly is. And I marvel at any black person who wants to remove themselves from their blackness. There's this instant thing of let me get away from where I come from. Let me get away from the Medeas of my family. Let me educate myself away from my blackness. Those people I don't have respect for. Mm -hmm. So if they have an opinion, great, you're educated. Did you get it? I, I, I hear you. Mm -hmm. But I can't respect what you're saying because you don't understand what this is and what this means to us. Black people like my mom, her story needed to be told. Yes. Because she has a story. Black people who work really hard and, and it was all of those people who gave birth to us to be able to be that. So. Yeah. Don't get me started but, on but, them. But Hollywood don't, don't didn't. Don't get me Tyler, started on. Don't get me Tyler, started on them Negroes. Game. I'm sorry. But, but, <laughs> but, no, but, no, but let's, let's but, talk but about. Holly, let's talk about. But it. Hollywood didn't understand it either. They go, Do you know who Tyler Perry is? Yeah. Who is this guy? Yeah. He's making so much money telling yeah. what kind of stories. Yeah. Yeah. What were we going to say? In other words, no. Uh, you're, you're saying that there is a duplicity. Yeah. For that sure. there there is the highbrow, if you will, yeah. or the intelligent black family. Yeah. And then there are some country bumpkins, and you are telling every story in between that. Which is why, when you get into these conversations, it could be somewhat frustrating. No, I, and I and I think some of us would, would resent that country bumpkin because I'm from Greensburg, Louisiana, too. <laughs> and I mean but, that but, I mean that in the no, most complimentary way. No, I understand that, but no, I I just here's here's what is important. Every person's story matters, right? My mother, who who didn't have some great legacy to give me, she had a story, you know? Nobody knew her name, but they, they'll know it now because she had a story. And when I'm telling my stories, uh, no matter how broad or how big, when I see them lift someone out of despair or see someone laughing and coming into theater one way and leaving another, I've yes. done exactly what I was yes. supposed to do. Yes. That's what matters to me. You that know, is why I've had this level of success. You know that exactly. Is so you know exactly people. what you're yeah. doing. You're also in a very unique position. We keep hearing the, the after SAG after after strike is about mm. to end. You've had a very unique perspective in that you're also an actor, you're also a studio head. So you can see both sides. Yeah. What is your take on as we sit here today? Well, I, I've tried to have as many private conversations as I could because here I am, as you said, being studio yeah. head, being a, a owner of a streamer. I understand that, but also understanding how important it is for the working actor. And what you have to understand about the United Auto Workers, when that strike ended, what was clear about this, they knew where they were going to work, right? They, and it's actors, we don't know that. So George is a right to work state, but I closed the doors to stand in solidarity with SAG. So I completely get what we're fighting for. I've also sat on the other side of the table negotiating 
negotiate against people on the AMPTP. Mm -hmm. So I understand that part of the negotiation. But in understanding the working actor, you know, I only say this publicly because she said it. I paid Cicely Tyson a million dollars for one day of work. Yeah. Because when actors age, get to a certain age, they, they're they pretty much discarded. Mm. Uh, Taraji P. Henson talks about me paying her $500,000 years ago to set her quote. I recently paid two black women who've been in the business for 25 years a million dollars because even when their agents were asking for less than half of that, yeah. because I understand the working actor. But I also understand as we're looking at all of this and as we're negotiating, it is so important that Fran Drescher, uh, Duncan Ireland, the whole negotiating committee have done a fantastic job moving this forward. They have gotten this way further than anybody thought we could get it. So mm -hmm. I'm so proud of what, they're, what they've done. Tyler. But it's really important to know, it's really important to know when we've won. This is only a three year uh. deal. And in two years, two and a half years, we'll be renegotiating again. So we have to know when have we won, what have and and when have we won for now? For now, yeah. for, that's the There's thing. There's a long term yeah, for, for now. now. For now, and if if I had done ran my business like trying to get everything at once, I wouldn't be here. I've got as much as I can for now. Yeah. So let's see what we can do next. It's the, for, it's the for now. Yeah. And and how are you feeling not being able to work all this time? Because I know working feeds you. That's been debilitating. I'll it's bet. been debilitating for, for me in the sense of that is the very thing that gives me the level of comfort and how I process everything everything in my life. So to take that away from me has been very much taking a dagger to a lot of mm. parts of my soul. But but I'll get back to that. Well, hopefully it's going to end. Oh, for work. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Best, the name and, oh, of the I don't documentary. Think about those people, my God. Yeah. The, I'm doing fundraisers at the studios. We're doing food drives, giving to for your all the other boys. unions who are struggling. Yeah. So yeah. I can't yeah. say enough, uh, audience, about this documentary. I love how it ends because you're asked, who is Tyler Perry? And he goes, you know who I am. And the guy goes, I know who you are, but who do you think you are? And you just take a pause. You go, I'm Maxine's baby. Oh, it is so powerful and so yes. well done. Bravo, Tyler. Thank Bravo. you very much, Gil. Maybe Thank difficult you. to talk about, but it's very, 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 very well done. Thank the you. The Tyler Perry story, Maxine baby, Maxine's Baby begins streaming November 17th on Prime Video.